Good morning, folks. We've got the first CME-driven geomagnetic storm of the solar cycle. We'll head into space for some cool news and then bring it home with seismic risk and a double-relevant climate paper. But we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. Finding the last day on the sun was quiet in terms of its activity. Coronal holes gliding across the south. Active regions on the north really neither developing or decaying. Of course, we had seen there were two CMEs headed at Earth yesterday morning. We identified the first weak one in the solar wind, and last night the second struck. It's where all the telemetry is changing at once. As forecast, both were minor shock waves, but the second was enough to cause just enough instability with a 1-2 nudge only hours apart. By the way, a great way to see proton-heavy CME impacts arrive is a reduction in the electron counts. Yesterday morning and evening's events are showing up. And since they were minor, the geomagnetic storm is minor. It's waning already, but was indeed the first non-coronal hole storm of the cycle, the first from a CME. Folks, the big science story in the rest of the world yesterday was the alleged refinement of the black hole image in M87. Folks, now they're saying they're able to resolve the magnetic fields near the event horizon, which doesn't change our thinking from their original discovery that they're just seeing the surrounding energetic torus of the inner system. But folks, if you are new to this topic, head over to Sky Scholar YouTube channel. He has a number of videos explaining why this is really not science, why this image is barely above nonsense, and how you can prove it to yourself as well. That channel name was Sky Scholar. Up next, they're discovering that a satellite made to track water is actually an excellent space weather monitor in terms of solar flaring and CME release. When the sun fires a good flare, the brightness temperature increases, and the radio signals from the CME are pretty loud. SMOS has actually been picking up these readings from the sun since it went up, and with its 1.4 GHz constant view of the sun, it's as good as goes in terms of watching for solar flares. Up next, how about a strike-slip earthquake at a place where it's supposed to be a subduction zone? This one sent them spinning, and their only explanation is the existence of a strike-slip fault line nearby that they just didn't see before. Sticking with earthquakes for a much more relevant one here, it's the identification of risk along San Andreas. The loading suggests a thrust of 6 to 9 meters as possible, which would utterly devastate California, and they even identify which areas are likely to release the biggest quakes when they rupture. A must-read for locals. My initial reaction to this was, what do you mean a new type of basalt? Folks, I don't think I love their explanation of supervolcanoes erupting underwater. They're missing something and there aren't enough clues in the paper to piece the puzzle together. They are still shocked by our planet, and every one of these new discoveries takes their story of certainty of how we got to the Earth we see today and calls it into question. Now last but not least, it was not long ago we heard that Greenland must have been ice-free at some time in the last million years. Two weeks later, cut it in half at least. The Easter egg of the article is the identification of major cold snaps that refroze Greenland in that period caused by melting ice in the same glacial triggering mechanism in the ocean we regularly discuss here at the channel and which we are seeing on Earth today. But of course, the more important aspect of this is that in just a couple of weeks we have watched all the super old Greenland ice papers get debunked and now we'll have to cut that in half again here today. Folks, they will reduce that age even more such as the fate of the isotope dating fiasco on Earth. Baby steps. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.